pen, 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 we pen, 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 ooh, pen, 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 we pen, Okay, so can we start the interview now? Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to your friendly neighborhood college counselor. I'm very excited today to welcome our special guest to talk about the University of Pennsylvania. So UPenn, also abbreviated simply as Penn, is a private Ivy League research university in Philadelphia. It was one of the nine colonial colleges chartered before the U.S. Declaration of Independence, when Benjamin Franklin, the university's founder and first president, advocated for an educational institution that trained leaders in academia, commerce, and public service. Today, Penn is one of the most prestigious universities in the world. In this episode, we will learn all about the University of Pennsylvania so that you can decide whether it would be the perfect fit for you. I am beyond excited today to introduce our special guest for the episode, Prane. Welcome. Why don't you give us a little introduction about yourself? Um, hi, I'm Prane. I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in 2018. Um, I studied math and economics in the College of Arts and Sciences, um, and I'm happy to be here to share my insights about Penn. Wonderful. We're very excited to have you. So let's start off by talking a little bit about the Penn student culture. What is one stereotype about Penn students that you've heard of and how true have you found that to be? So sort of the unofficial motto that goes with the university is that Penn is a university that has an unofficial motto of work hard and play hard and that definitely does apply to the university. Students are extremely driven. Um, it's not uncommon for them to take six, seven classes a semester and be a part of multiple clubs and organizations and sort of balance that. But on the weekends, they definitely do try to enjoy themselves. Um, explore Philadelphia, the restaurants, the clubs, and definitely party. So that stereotype does apply to, to Penn. Um, in terms of like the demographics that go with an Ivy League school, it's generally stereotyped that Penn is a very wide preppy institution. And so to sort of debunk that myth, I would quote an interview that the Associate Dean of Engineering, Buntha Luge, when he was joining the university, coming from a public uh, school such as Berkeley, he was concerned about whether Penn was a very elite school that would be accessible to the masses. Uh, but what he has found is that the student body sort of hails from a more working class background than sort of the old money background that does correlate with universities such as Harvard, Princeton, or Yale. And I would say that definitely applies. But that being said, uh, Penn, while being very diverse and heterogeneous, does have sort of homogeneity in terms of the social circles that people build. There was an article my freshman year in the Daily Pennsylvanian that talked about sort of a tale of two winter breaks where they profiled a winter break for a student that hailed from LA and how he was holidaying in Aspen as opposed to a student that sort of like, you know, was on financial aid and was working at Chick-fil-A to make ends meet um, and sort of have finances to sort of sponsor his education and in the interview, they did discuss how their social circles at Penn tend to be homogeneous, mm -hmm. uh, while the student from L.A. has his friend circle revolving around students that come from New York, L.A., uh, San Francisco, etc. Um, the student uh, who was working at Chick-fil-A, you know, have a social circle revolves around students who he met during his freshman year in his boarding house, etc. So I would say that while Penn is diverse, because it is based in a city, unlike some of the suburban campuses, mm -hmm. it does sort of create a disparity in terms of the social life and the social structure of the university. Students sort of tend to have homogeneous social circles mm -hmm. as opposed to diverse social circles where they're interacting with people across different yeah. income levels. Um, and because it is based in a city, sort of these distinctions become more palpable. Definitely. I find that so interesting because in contrast, like you said, to Princeton, check out our recent video for that one. A lot of the students hail from a very similar economic background. And given that Penn is located in Philadelphia, it draws from a much more working class type of student body. 
But nonetheless, that diversity is almost makes a self-selecting social group on campus where more of the wealthier upper class students would group together and the others also group together. So not having much mingling across. So we're talking about diversity of students on the Penn campus. What is the presence of international students there? Penn has a very vibrant international student body. It is sort of one of the few Ivy League schools that are very international student friendly. Penn has fraternities that specifically cater to international students and they're sort of the more popular ones on campus. It is not uncommon to see that the class president or the School of Arts and Sciences representative in the undergraduate assembly is an international student. So um, I would say Penn is definitely a very international student friendly mm. school. And if you're an international student, you should definitely consider applying because the transition can definitely be easier. Amazing. That's so helpful for our students to understand. Um, I've heard a lot about how Penn has a strong Greek life culture on campus and in contrast to the other Ivy Leagues, really embraces that whole fraternity and sorority mindset. So what was that like in your experience? So fraternities and sororities and Greek life uh, does play a central role in sort of the social experience on campus. 30% of the student body is sort of part of a fraternity or a sorority, but sort of the um, excitement and buzz around them sort of diminishes from freshman year to senior year. You would find fraternities on campus right adjacent to sort of the academic buildings. You would have fraternities right next to sort of Huntsman Hall where the Wharton School is housed, um, as well as other academic buildings. You can find several fraternities on Locust Walk. So fraternities do sort of like, you know, uh, are a huge part of the campus culture. That being said, you can have a good social life being part of a club. For instance, if you're a part of the student newspaper, the Daily Pennsylvanian, or you're a part of the International Affairs Association, which hosts the Model UN, there are events that these clubs host almost on a weekend basis to sort of socialize. And you can have an, a social experience that is rewarding without being in a fraternity as well. Yeah, uh, perfect. No, that's super helpful. So Greek life is prominent, but it's not mandatory to have a social life. Yes, it's not mandatory to have a social life. Students sort of, again, like, you know, because they're so homogeneous, they sort of tend to stick together as mm. part of like, you know, the clubs they are part of or the roommates they had during their freshman year. And students sort of start moving off campus or uh, start living in sort of apartment style housing that is available on campus from junior year. So it's not uncommon to have your social life revolve around like your roommates and have parties in your apartment as opposed to sort of going out to a party following your junior year uh, to a fraternity or not. Understood. Yeah, that's really interesting. I want to know about what it was what was it like being a student in Philadelphia? What was that city experience like for you? So for my first two semesters, um, I did stay stay on campus. Um, so for my freshman year, I was in a dorm, while in my second year, I was in an apartment style housing. Um, and for my third and fourth years, I sort of moved closer towards downtown. I, I moved very close to where the river is that separates downtown from uh, sort of university city. And it was very easy for me to walk down to the city uh, over the weekends and sort of explore different restaurants, go explore the city in yeah. general. Philadelphia has several museums as well as it has a huge cultural scene on offer. Philadelphia has a very vibrant social life mm -hmm. in general. Um, it has great restaurants on offer. It's definitely not New York City, but it does offer everything uh, yeah. that a big city can offer. Yeah, I visited Philadelphia a few times. I actually visited the Penn campus when I was applying. And I remember being so struck by the, the beauty of the campus, but also that surrounding area. Like the city is so bustling, but it's still very quaint and a lot of nature I observed, like very green and, and lush. I could see a lot of students feeling at home there, right? Not too big like a New York City, but not so small like a small college town um, that some of the other more rural universities are located in, right? So it's kind of a good middle ground there. Yeah, so I would say summers are definitely the best part. Yeah. Um, so I definitely enjoyed staying there over the summers. Yeah. Um, you always have the time to sort of pick a book and like, you know, see the fireworks on 4th mm -hmm. of July across the river. And um, so there's a lot to do in the city. And I think that the university does sort of provide. It's not like Columbia where New York City is sort of your laboratory. Right. But you do have the opportunity to go out mm -hmm. and explore the city. Got it. Wonderful. So let's talk about how you actually got in now. 
Um, in one sentence, can you summarize what your common application essay was about? Um, sure. So my common application essay spoke more about uh, my transition from sort of a small town in northern India uh, to the Dune School, as well as my growth uh, over time. Um, I think that the international student body back in my day would sort of hail from Delhi, the more metropolitan towns in India. So that definitely played a huge factor coming in that I had strong academics um, as well as extracurriculars coming from a small town. And it spoke about my growth and my journey. Um, and that played a pivotal role, I feel, in sort of getting admitted to Penn. Over the years, I've seen sort of students hail from like more diverse backgrounds in India and Penn is trying to become more diverse um, in terms of the international student body. Um, so definitely you should highlight your demographics, your journey um, in your common application and your essays as that plays a huge role in, in admissions. Interesting. So you got that, folks. If you are from a small town or maybe an a more unique niche cultural background, it's in your best interest to really highlight that and demonstrate that I am going to be an interesting value add to the college campus and the dialogue that we have on campus, right? I'm bringing my unique life experiences and perspectives that maybe none, no other student has. Is that right? Um, yes, so I would okay. definitely say that um, the Ivy League schools do try to uh, have a diverse student body, whether that's uh, international students mm -hmm. or students from the US, Canada or so. Um, so definitely do highlight uh, your own individual journey through your essays. Uh, that would be my advice to prospective students. So obviously Penn is very well known for its academics first and foremost. What was your favorite class that you took at Penn during your time there? Um, sure. So I would highlight two courses, one in my major and one not in my major. One was a freshman seminar called Desire and Demand, uh, where we would sort of survey the local markets in Philadelphia through field trips. And that was a really enjoyable class because I got to be friends with several of the students taking the course during my freshman year. Um, we visited uh, sort of the Walnut Street uh, markets. We visited Reading Terminal, the Old City, as well as the nearby malls such as King of Prus Prussia to sort of survey the demographics of the shoppers uh, for that class. And I, I definitely enjoyed that class a lot. Um, we had a lot of fun in that class. In terms of my major, um, I definitely enjoy taking classes with prominent faculty. Um, the reason being that it's all about sort of keeping pace with them and uh, with these leading academics and how fast sort of their brain works. So one class that I sort of enjoyed where I felt really out of my comfort zone was uh, a course called Real Analysis. Um, I took it with the previous dean of the college, Dennis de Turk, who's an award-winning professor. And the course sort of focuses on the foundations of calculus. So you sort of develop the real number line and then theorems around differentiability, uh, integrability, and so forth. Um, you and lost me. <laughs> you already lost me. <laughs> Very complex. Um, yes. This is good. It's good. Um, and so... Um, what was unique about that course was that while it cover, covered the traditional lecture material, every question on the exam was very unconventional. So I finished around half a question out of four on my first exam, wow. one and a half questions on my second exam. Um, and then I was literally crying before Thanksgiving oh. break because I could not keep up with the pace of the class. Um, but he sort of made the uh, final sort of easier. So I did get a good grade in the class. Yeah. Um, but it was really high stake for me because that course is a key component for graduate applications and economics. Um, and my economics professor said that I had to do well in the course to sort of mm -hmm. get accepted. But the professor was very nice and supportive and he got me along and sort of served as a mentor for my studies beyond Penn. Mm -hmm. And I wish I'd taken more math classes with him because um, it would have provided a better foundation for me for the future. Interesting. What I'm understanding, even from these two courses, is that the emphasis of Penn's academic approach is very practical in nature, very uh, real world, right? Actually going out into the field, gathering data um, on the ground. And I think that connects to Ben Franklin's whole mindset of pragmatism and creating an institution that would drive innovation in the real world. Uh, in contrast to maybe some other universities that are more theoretical, abstract, high-minded, um, but happy to just learn for learning's sake, I've noticed a lot of Penn students are really about doing and getting out there and making progress and making change in the world. Um, and that does 
come through in the curriculum and in the academics as well. Yep, surely I would definitely corroborate that. For instance, there's another course um, that sort of focuses on theoretical math, where this professor was teaching, and he sort of first went through the traditional curriculum and then start started exploring the applications to cryptography mm. in his class. So even though the course content can be theoretical, they do try to highlight the more uh, applicable parts through the courses. Um, there's definitely sort of active learning classes where you see the lectures in advance and sort of work out the problem sets uh, within your classes um, instead of smaller groups. So uh, there's definitely more focus on problem solving as opposed to just mastering the theoretical content and watching lectures. Wonderful. That's so interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. As we draw to a close for today's interview, I would like to know from you, what is one thing you wish you had known right at the beginning of maybe your application journey or at the beginning of going before you went to Penn? Um, sure. So I would say that like I was too focused on sort of the prestige. Uh, um, I applied to several Ivy League schools, some of which I don't know if I would have been a good fit for or not. Um, so I would definitely say have an open mind. Uh, there are several great U.S. colleges and do try to understand where your priorities lie and sort of develop a college list that caters to the best fit for you um, as opposed to optimizing on prestige. So that would be my advice. I would also say have faith in yourself. Um, I definitely did not have a lot of faith in myself and um, I got a lot of support at university to sort of accomplish uh, the things that I did. Um, and so it's definitely, um, you know, I would again quote the dean who says that, you know, try to take the most challenging classes and push yourself out of your comfort zone. You never know what you can accomplish until you try. So don't be scared of failure and try to push yourself out of your comfort zone and take risks as much as possible. That's really great advice. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Spill the Tea with CC. It's me, your friendly neighborhood college counselor. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button below, subscribe, and let us know in the comments what other university alumni you'd like us to interview next. And also carry your resume on hand. You never know when you'll need it.